Well, I'm here with Vika O'Grady, who is the leader of the Austin region for Metro Study and Myers Research. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, I'm happy to be here, Emily. Thanks appreciate for inviting me. Yeah, I appreciate the virtual meeting that we're able to conduct today. We, uh, we want to touch base with you especially about what's happening in the builder market in response to the pandemic locally. So what are you hearing from the builders? What do you think the kind of economic impact of how they're being impacted today will be long term in new construction? Give us a little rundown on what you're seeing immediately. Well, I think it's helpful to think about where we were, right? We ended 2019 with a record number of home starts record number of home closings, and that's even before the recession. And then we had record lot deliveries. So we had all these new lots coming on the ground and this demand that was so strong that it just kind of fueled us into what I think probably would have been, and may even still be, the best first quarter we've ever had in 2020. So right up until this thing started to morph into what it is today, Builders were having very, very strong home sales and home construction was just proceeding on a record level. So we're coming off of a high to some degree, yep. potentially. Are you seeing that there's value in new construction in the sense of how it relates directly to this issue? So the way that I'm thinking about that is clients may be still willing to purchase. They're still in, willing to invest in housing. They just feel like this, this exact moment is not the right moment for their move. And new construction gives them some leeway in that. There's a runway before they actually yeah. have to make the move. Do you think yep. that that benefits new construction versus residential retail right now? I think so. I think we're going to go into a period, and we're already there, where people are feeling somewhat uncertain, right? And mm -hmm. we're all hoping, really hoping, that this is a V-shaped recession, right? And not a U-shaped right. or an L-shaped. If it is a V, the fundamentals in Austin are still really strong. And so buying a new home now allows you to have some comfort to get through that time of period of construction, which frankly may also be a little bit more longer because of some of the challenges we're going to have with getting supplies for a while, right? Italian marble other things from mm -hmm. China, you know, there, there are going to be some challenges that may push out construction times to be more extended. But if you're, if you're looking to make a move to a new home, um, you know, that, that is one benefit, if you will, that you've got some time to kind of get your act together, pick out your stuff, get everything built and move in after this is all behind us. So, uh, and you spoke a little bit about this just now with regards to the delays that might occur as it relates to getting materials in. Are you hearing mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that those construction materials are already becoming delayed or are those things that we anticipate as we continue? I think we're still more in anticipation mode. I mean, frankly, we're in, we're in shock as a country, I think. True, you know, we're, we're really true. still grappling with what does this all mean? I've heard talk to builders who've had calls from suppliers and vendors who say, you know, I may not be able to get this, but I'm not seeing it pervasive yet. Now, now having said that, most of them anticipate it's going to get worse before it gets better. So um, you know, that may mean making some substitutions and maybe finding new suppliers. Um, you know, if, if there were one thing we know about Americans, they work for ways to make things work, right? We think we work together and we try to find the things that work. So I think builders are already starting to explore. You know, how can I keep building houses in this time? You know, you and I talked as we prepared for this interview a little bit uh, about the way that things happened in, in 08, the last kind of big economic recess that we could discuss. And we mm -hmm. talked about the fact that we ended up with this pipeline lag of no spec inventory because builders stopped getting so far ahead of their skis with the specs they were willing to put on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see that again? What do you expect on that front? Well, again, kind of looking back to where we were, we were already very tight on new home inventory. I mean, let alone resale. We already right. know the resale inventory is very, very tight. But new home inventory, even though builders traditionally built a lot of specs in the spring, it had already been sold, um, you know, early on in the spring. We saw the buyers come in in early January, not wait until after Super Bowl like they used to. And right. so, so a lot of the spec inventory has been really, really tight in Austin for a long period of time. So while builders may pull back and say, I'm going to be careful about how many specs they put on the ground, where they're coming from is such an area of undersupply that I don't think, at least here in Austin, we're going to get any overhang of supply for new homes. Yeah. And so, at least if this thing ends in a, you know, in a reasonable time frame. Mid sure. Sure. So we still, yeah. even, even if, if demand drops off a touch, we still just have such that pipeline of demand that and our supply is so woefully under serving that demand that we expect that we're going to continue to have aggressive uh, plays in the marketplace. 
I, I think so. I mean, there, there are some builders who are looking longer term. And remember, the builder, builders in Austin, you know, 80% of the builders in Austin do most of the sales. Mm -hmm. And most of those, excuse me, 80%, 20% of the builders in Austin do 80% of the sales. So if you look at the builder makeup, we've got some large national builders, right, um, who make up the bulk of what's happening in this market. And most of them are already engaged on a national level, talking with their suppliers about what changes they need to make, um, talking to their employees about what changes they need to make, and how do they keep carrying forward. This is sure. going to be a, a, a blip for them and a fairly serious blip but it's not gonna be something that they can't get past here in Austin. The, build, the builders that I would be a little bit more concerned about um, is those, are those builders who are smaller builders, local building, you know, not as connected. Um, and that's, I, I think, is one of the reasons that um, Austin is in pretty, gonna be in pretty good shape compared to the rest of the country. It's just the builder makeup here is made up of the bigger guys, primarily. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they've got the ability to leverage their scale, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I would think, but you tell me that in terms of how they're looking at all of the different markets that they're being impacted in, Austin, Texas still remains a really stronghold for them as I'm other sure. markets won't have the same just supply and demand uh, offset that we've got. Yeah, I mean, as recently as late February, I was talking with builders and developers who wanted to come to this market because it's so strong, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now I think, have we seen a pause on that? Yeah, we have. I mean, nobody's going to make a big decision when they're grappling with how to manage the health and safety of my family and my, my employees, right? Sure, they're, sure. They're really focused on that for today. But the fundamentals are still there. And we've got a very strong economy. We've got a diverse economy, right? When you look at what makes up the Austin economy, 17% of our jobs are in trade, transportation, and utilities. That's going to take a big hit. Another 10% is in leisure and hospitality. That's a big hit too, a really big hit. So that's about a quarter of our economy. But when you look at professional business services, you look at government, you look at um, uh, all the tech jobs we have here, those, those aren't going away. And so, you know, people are going to want to flock to areas where there is tech talent. And Austin has that reputation, and, and I think we'll continue to benefit from people moving here. Yeah, so the plays that we've made to have a sustainable economy long term should play out the way that we intended them to. And, right. you know, thank goodness we have the foresight to have to diversify what, what stabilizes our economy overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got and it. If you look at, just to be a little bit more specific, you got Army Futures Command here. Mm -hmm. They're not going away. If anything, this is going to be a call to them to continue to grow. And yeah, they better kick it up a notch. <laughs> right, right. And then the biodiversity um, area, you know, we've got more with Dell Medical School than we've ever had. And, you know, we need the help there too, right? So yeah, clearly. our Austin economy is, is well positioned to rebound out of okay. this. That's a great message. Let me ask you, I know as our realtor members are starting to move their operations towards virtual showings, you know, virtual meetings, Zoom meetings like we're doing today, are we seeing mm -hmm. the builders follow suit so that they can continue business as usual as it uh, mm -hmm. relates to the sales part of their business? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, a lot of builders have already invested in virtual home tours and the like. Sure. Um, but I think this is just a call to those who have not or have not taken it to the next level to be able to do that. So yeah. I, I definitely see that that shift. And what will be really interesting is to see what happens to the model home sort of scenario mm -hmm. as we come out of this. You know? Yeah, will you need them forever or will we get used to not yeah. having them and that be acceptable? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, when I look at the number of models in our database, mm -hmm. they, the number of models really hasn't grown that much, even though our housing starts and our home construction has grown exponentially. So the mon models were already becoming more productive. And anecdotally, what we hear is that people are going pretty far along the sales process, sitting in the comfort of their own home, mm -hmm. and only going to the model to seal the deal. And now I yeah. think we're going to find a way to make that happen where you don't have to do it in a, in a desk in an office. You can do it via Zoom or virtually. Yeah, I can't, I mean, just anecdotally, as someone who used to work for Newland Community as a master plan community developer, I can remember the model home village was the cornerstone of how you marketed the community at large. Right. And we've right. definitely seen that shift. And it makes sense to me that there will be things learned from this experience and this time that apply to the way that we conduct our business moving forward for a long, long time. I um, think and that, right. that's probably a good thing. If we have to find a silver lining, we'll find them. Mm -hmm. Well, and technology is here with us now, right? So, right. you know, if this had happened to us 10 years ago, we would be in a lot worse shape than we are today. 
That's a great point. Technology is here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, any final words you would leave the realtor community just about how they should be working with the, with builders, what they should expect in terms of new home starts as we work through this environment that we're in. Yeah. You know, be kind to one another. Um, yeah, you know, I know built realtors, realtors are really important to builders to help their business uh, grow. And, uh, and here in Austin, 80% of new home sales have a realtor associated with the deal. Right. And so that's uh, that's a big deal. Their relationships in it is an important to one. And we're just have to make accommodations for each other, you know, be willing to, Talk via phone at odd hours. If you, well, realtors are always willing to do that. <laughs> That's <laughs> a true statement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> builders have to get well. more flexible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be more flexible and just be open to doing business in new ways. And I think we can get past this and uh, and feel good about where we come out on the other side. That's excellent. Well, we're so appreciative of your time today. Thank you for helping provide this resource to our members. And I know we're going to hear lots from Metro Study and Myers Research as we continue. Thanks so much. Thank you, Emily.